Hey, come on in. Welcome to my sewing channel. My name is Delilah and today we are going to finish a mini quilt. If you were here with us last week, finish this mini gingham quilt top. And so this, in this episode, we will quilt it and bind it, but we're going to cheat on the binding. We're going to take a shortcut. <music> And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing because I post a sewing tutorial every Wednesday. And back to our mini quilt project. I will be showing you a quick and easy quilt binding technique. And I don't know why the lighting keeps changing on me, but uh, let's just keep rolling through this. So I'm going to show you how to finish this mini quilt without having a separate piece for the binding. Now there may be some mistakes along the way. Um, I'm also going to be using my walking foot because I'm going to show you some straight line quilting. And we will be listening to some music and we're just going to have a lot of fun. Oh, and in the descriptions tab below, I will link up the pattern for the gingham quilt in the full size version, and it is great for beginners. And if you want to see how I made the quilt top, I will post the link here up at the top. I posted a video on that one last week. So let me give, so let me start with the details. So this is a 13 and a half by 13 and a half. So I have my warm and natural, my quilt top, and then this is what I'm going to use for the back. And then I've cut a strip that's gonna go all the way around the quilt, and it's only one inch. And then my spray basting. And I could also use safety pins, but I this is so convenient. I'll show you how this works. When using the basting spray, you're going to want to find a flat surface, and I always lay down a tablecloth so that the surfaces don't get sticky, and make sure that you shake the can really well, and then just go ahead and spray it on evenly, and then slowly press your quilt top down, and then just go ahead and do it to the other side, and then you're done. And this works on large quilts as well. I have done the spray basting on even a twin size quilt. Now I'm going to take my one inch strips and I'm going to, well, I'm gonna attach my walking foot and then I'm gonna sew down my one inch strips like this so that they go like that. And you know, I could have done it before and spray basted it down, but I had to be a little bit more stable because sometimes when you work with strips, it kind of can get all wonky and we're not putting our backing on just yet. Okay, so I've sewn my one inch strip all the way around this mini quilt top. Now I'm going to trim it. Okay, I have to confess something. When I sewed down the strips, I accidentally cut them on the bias. Yeah, so <laughs> if you don't know what that means, that's okay. If you know what that means, then yeah, you know that I really messed up. So I'm gonna try to hide it as much as I can, but it, you know, the, the strips are a little bit wavy, but I'm just gonna make the best of it and I'm just gonna keep going on this because, you know, it's not being entered in a state fair or anything. I'm just gonna put my coffee maker on top of it. So wanna know what happens when you're sewing a strip the wrong way and you cut a strip the wrong way? That's what you get. Okay, so I mean, you can't tell me that you haven't made a sewing mistake yourself before. I mean, you just didn't put it on YouTube. So I mean, like, who's the loser now? Oh, that's, that's still me, right? Okay, I have trimmed this down. Now I'm going to uh, cut out my back fabric and lay it on top and then we're going to turn it over. So that's where the whole binding, the fake binding comes in. It's going to look like it's binded. But before I do this, I did my spray basting. I'm going to put like two stitches down here first before I sew the back onto the front. Okay, this is the back uh, fabric that I chose to use and I am just going to size it with the size of my quilt top. Okay. 
Now I'm going to flip it upside down so that the right sides are facing each other. And we're going to sew all the way around it using a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to leave an opening so I can turn it right sides out. I'm going to backstitch where my um, opening is and then, you know, skip a few stitches so that I can have room to pull this right sides out. And then backstitch at that opening and then just continue through. Now I'm going to clip the corners and then find my opening and then we'll turn it right sides out. Okay, and so there, this once we get it quilted, it's going to look more like it's the binding. So now we can just iron it a little bit and then we'll put it through the machine again and just do some quilting on it. Okay, so now I've turned it inside out, kind of ironed it down a little bit, and now it's ready to be quilted. I'm going to use this Arafil thread. I don't know if any of you guys have used this before, but it's beautiful thread. I never thought the day would come where I could tell the difference between thread, but this one I love. It doesn't have all the uh, flyaways that come with regular threads. And I don't like to stitch into the ditch, so I just line up my walking foot to go into the seam, and then I move my needle over to the right about 1.5 and so and then I do my stitch length to a three and then let's just get started okay I started on the edge because I was just talking too much I really wish I would have started in the middle but I'll catch that on the next line The only downfall to this is because we've already put our binding on, so it's going to be kind of hard for me to stop my stitch at where the fake binding is, but I'll make it work. So that ended up being perfect. So I'll show you. Um, because I keep talking and I'm not uh, paying attention, but see, I just did a back stitch on this. And so that's my first line. I'm gonna do a, uh, well, maybe I should do, sorry, I'm thinking as I'm doing this, thinking that maybe I should do my binding look first, but I think I'll, I'll do my straight lines first and then round it off. Okay, so now I'm going to start in the middle and stitch down. So then I went that way. Now I'm going to change my direction of my quilting and go this way so that the fabric doesn't just pull in one direction. So this is the part where you just kind of get to sit back and relax and forget about all the mistakes and just admire the stitches. Now I'm going to start going in the opposite direction to do my crisscrosses.
okay, I'm just taking a break and I'm looking at the beautifulness of it. See how it's turning out? I just love how this looks so far. So what I'm going to do is just cut all these loose strings and these ones have all been backstitched. Okay, so I cut all the loose strings off and now I'm going to stitch all the way around. Right here, we're gonna stitch in the ditch. And then your walking foot will kind of guide you in the ditch to where the needle goes. Okay, so now we've stitched all the way across. Yep, see, so this section right here looks really good because it actually does look like it's the binding. And then the back, I just need to clean up the strays in the back, but it's like this, it just turned out really, really cute. Let's just try this out and see how it works. And oh my gosh, it's doing exactly what it needs to do. It's just sitting there all pretty. Okay, so I just wanna say, like I almost just didn't post this video and I almost just threw this in my abandoned pile because the binding just wasn't, you know, working out the way that I wanted it to. But I have to say, it just really turned out really pretty. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, then give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss another quilting party.